All right, so I hope there won't be any problems, although I'm still only able to use half of the screen, but I hope that this will be resolved by next week as well. So let me do a few problems related to what we did this week in class. So this one is problem 3.56 from book. So you have a tower which is 8.75 meter high and on this tower you shoot something at an angle 60 degree with speed 15 meters per second and this is the sea level there's a boat coming in and this boat has a speed they say that it's 45 meter per second so that's 0 0.5 they say 45 centimeter per second so that's 0 0.5 meter per second that's a speed but it's moving towards the tower so as always I have to use I have to choose an origin and I have to put some coordinates if I have to do any two-dimensional problem, this is what I need to do. So I choose this to be origin, and this is my x-axis, and I can take this to be my y-axis. So choosing this, the speed is in the negative x direction. So as per our convention, it's minus, if I write it, as a vector is minus 0.45 meter per second with a unit vector iota because that's the only component it has. Now <coughs> uh, I can oops, this is from last time. Now we this is uh, now I have short this ball from here and what I need to know the problem asks that when should I shoot that ball what should be the distance of this boat so that the, this ball or whatever this thing is short lands at the front of this boat so what I do I write the equations for this ball which is short from here since it's moving under gravity and we know that means that you, we have an acceleration which is minus g j purely in this direction. So that's the acceleration for the ball and for this thing we have once and for all solved the equations of motion. So I don't have to do it every time. So I just directly write the solution that the y coordinate these are for the ball is minus half gt square plus v naught y t plus y naught while the x coordinate for the ball it obeys plus x naught and as always I can write it as a vector equation or I can write the two components separately it doesn't matter the vector notation is just packaging of these two things so this is for the ball while the boat it's not doing anything in the y direction so I don't need to write its equation in the y direction. So boat I'm calling as ship so s represents the coordinate of the ship how it's changing. So there's no acceleration so that's just vx of the ship time t plus x naught of the ship which for this case is just minus vs which I am writing like this plus d because I am assuming that I start counting the time when I shoot the ball and 
the boat is supposed to be at distance t and I have to find what should be the distance t when I shoot and that's when I start my stopwatch. So this is the equation for the ship and these are the equations for the ball. This is ship. So then at landing when this ball will land what I gonna have I'm gonna have y coordinate of the ball is going to be 0 because it has now dropped at the sea level dt square plus v naught this is the y component and this thing y naught remember what is y naught i'm not going to put the value but this y naught is the initial coordinate of the ball at time zero which as you can see over here is eight point seven five meters because it's short from here so at t is equal to zero it already has an initial y naught coordinate which appears in this equation over here because when i put t is equal to zero in in this equation in this equation when i put t is equal to zero y becomes y naught so that's the initial y coordinate so I have this equation at the landing and I have this equation v naught x t the x coordinate of the let me write it this way x coordinate of the ball is equal to the x coordinate of the ship because this is what we are assuming that we choose the distance so that the ball lands right at the beginning at the uh, front of the ship so the two coordinates become equal so that would mean that the equation for x was v naught x t plus x naught but x naught is zero because i had put my origin here so initially x the coordinate of the ball is zero and this is equal to the coordinate of the boat which is vst plus d because its original its initial coordinate at t is equal to zero looking over here is d So I have this. So this would mean that I can from here solve for t. Remember v naught x is the initial x component of the ball's velocity v naught y is the initial y component of the ball's velocity and vs is the velocity of the ship so this means that the time when the ball lands is this and i can put it in my first equation over here But for first what I, no, let's not put it here, put it, let's put it here. But before putting it here, let's solve it. So equation, let's call it equation one. Equation one gives for time. Equation one also tells me at what time the ball lands. <clears throat> because this is, 
I have already put y is equal to zero, so that's the time when the ball lands. <coughs> so this gives me uh, this equation. I can write it. like this so that I can see its quadratic form and now I can solve it so the t is 2 v naught y t over g plus minus 4 v naught y square over g square plus 4 y naught g times 4. So this gives me t is equal to when I solve it a little bit there's a over 2 here so there's a 2a so this gives me t is equal to v naught y t over g and plus minus if i take g out it gives me v naught y square plus uh, for y naught g because I took a g out so there's a g which comes over here this is just some simple algebra solving the quadratic equation so this is the time when the ball lands and this should be the same time if we want the ball to land at the front end which is given in this equation too or let's call this 2 let's call this 2 and let, let's call this 3 so 2 and 3 have same time time when ball lands so I just equate those two that gives me that gives me d over v naught x plus v s is equal to one over g v naught y. Well, there's no t here. This was already a solution. V naught y plus v naught y square plus 4 v naught plus 4 y naught g okay one point over here so there are two solutions for t one is with a plus in between one is with a minus so clearly you can see over here if I remove this term, then I have v naught y over g minus v naught y over g with the minus solution. So that's a zero. And when I add this, so I'm subtracting something from v naught y over g, which is more than v naught y over g, right? Because I added something to the square root, which was already equal to v naught y over g. So if I include the mi if I take the minus solution, that's giving me a negative time. So that is some time before. I shot the ball so I don't need that that's actually telling me the time if the ball were coming because the ball equations don't know what what's when did the thing start it tells me the time if the ball were really coming from here so it tells me this time before the ball was shot so I don't need that I need the later time a positive time when it lands here so therefore I use the positive number here and I have to all I need to do is solve for d and d turns out to be v naught x 
plus V S V naught Y plus V naught Y square plus four Y naught G over G. Now everything over here is known in terms of our initial data because V naught X this is V naught cosine 60 and V naught Y is V naught sine 60 and V naught we had in our initial data this was something like <coughs> I wrote it up there 15 meter per second this is known Vs was the speed of the boat which was minus 15 well actually I since I included the minus sign here so Vs I am taking it to be a positive number so Vs is 0.545 meter per second G is 10 and everything is known in here why not why not is the initial height which was 8.75 meters so what is left is just to put these numbers and that will get give you the distance when so when the boat reaches this distance then you should fire your ball <clears throat> distance of the ship when the ball needs to be fired <coughs> if there's any question you can raise your hand Wait. Rafa, you have to stop doing this. Thanks. Okay, now I have problem. Three point six. Uh, I may have wrong numbering. I don't believe that it would be 3.6, but I'll check and I can write it down in a second. What's the number? So you have a container like that. Its width is D. Its height is 2D. And from a distance which is 6D from it, you shoot something. It says water in the book, but if you don't want to imagine about water, let's suppose you shoot a ball at 45 degree. The question is, what should be the range of the velocity? So you have to shoot it at 45. And what should be the range of the velocities? so that this lands inside the container that means it goes it goes like this and either goes like that or it, you shoot it with more speed and goes like that something like this so that means you have to solve for those velocities so that at this height, at height 2D, its position is between 60 and 70. <coughs> so 
again, I have these equations. Y is equal to, this is for the ball, minus half gt square plus v naught t plus y naught and x is equal to v naught x t plus x naught. Now in this case, since you are shooting, I take the origin here, x axis here, y axis here. So x naught and y naught, they are both zero. While <coughs> this is v naught y. v naught y, this is v naught x. So v naught y is whatever your speed is, v naught times sine of 45. So this is v naught over under root 2, while v naught x is cosine 45. So that's again v naught over under root 2, equally divided in case of 45 degrees. So that means in this equation, this y naught would be 0. And to enter that container, your y is 2d. You are checking what happens when your ball is at height 2d, that means you are at the top of the container where it's opened. So from this equation, let's say 1, you are able to write 2d is equal to minus half gt square plus v naught over under root 2t and at the same time what you want when y is 2d at the same time at the same time you want at the same t you want x is equal to 6t that's the first entry point and then i'll check what happens when x is equal to 7d so one the, the front end will give me one range of the starting range of the V and the other end will give me the ending range. So I need a range of velocity so that it lands between 60 and 70 at height 2D because that's the condition when it will enter the, that bucket. So you have this and in the second equation, the X equation, I get uh, t is equal to x under root 2 over v naught and <coughs> so this gives me x is equal to v naught over under root 2 t but x is 60 is equal to v naught over under root 2 t so that means t is 6 under root 2 d over v naught and that should happen at the same time as y is 2d so i put it here that gives me Two d is equal to minus half g, and instead of t, I put this thing there. Uh, so let me first put this thing for t. Uh, let me put this thing, and then I'll put the uh, value for x. So this gives me x square 2 over v naught square. 
प्लस वी नॉट ओवर अंडर रूट टू एक्स अंडर रूट टू ओवर वी नॉट सो दिस गिव्स मी माइनस हाफ जी एक्स स्क्वेर टू कैंसल्स x square over v naught square plus x so when i put x is equal to 60 that gives me 2d is equal to minus g and i am putting here 60 because that's the front end so i get 36 d square over v square plus 6d so this gives me 36 g d square over v square is equal to 4d and just by simple algebra i find v square is 36 g d square over 4d so v is 3 under root g d and when i put x is equal to 70 for the other end i'm going to have 2d is equal to minus g 36 d square over v square plus 7d and this gives me v square over 36 g d square is 1 over 5d and v square Is thirty six g d over five. So v is six over under root five under root g d. So this is a smaller velocity. and this is slightly bigger this one bigger so the range is actually smaller one lands you at the other end and bigger one lands you at the front end you should try to figure out why is that the case so we is bigger than this and less than this that's the range <sighs> should try to see that why is that the case you will have to think a little let me do one more problem of this kind then we will move on to other So suppose there is some person they are running on a ledge they jumping into the sea and this is 9 meter deep and there's a ledge the book says this is problem 3. well can be chapter 3 again made a mistake i'll fix these i guess are we on chapter 3 i'm not sure i thought it's chapter 2 i'll fix these numbers in a second so the book says 1.75 cent meter but that is not a very interesting number let me take uh this to be something 
like eight meter or something. Let's take eight meter. And after this, there's C. So the person wants to go into the C. Don't want to end up landing on the leads. So at what speed they should be running for this to happen? So again, the equations are same. Y is equal to, I have to choose a coordinate system. So I can put O here, X here, Y here. Then this is the equation. V naught Y T plus Y naught. Now in this case, y naught as you can see is 9 meter but v naught v because they are going straight into this initially that's at time zero this is what happens there's no y component of the velocity so v naught y is zero that means the equation for the y coordinate of this person follows this while for the x is v naught t plus x naught but since at t is equal to 0 they are at the end of the ledge where x naught is 0 where the x coordinate is 0 so i don't have an x naught this means that the time any time is this it tells me i can just tell where on the x-coordinate the person is and I can tell what time is it. <coughs> so I can put it here and that gives me y is equal to minus half g x over y not, v naught minus half g x over v naught plus y naught <coughs> and over here now i want the x to be equal to this when i what i want from this equation is when x is equal to this thing, let's call it x naught, and let's x naught will create a confusion. Let's call it x tilde. When x is x tilde, y has to be zero because that's when they land. So zero minus half g x tilde over v naught plus y naught. That's the equation which relates my length of the ledge to the height of the cliff to the initial velocity which I need. So this, if I solve it, I get 2y0. So this is something like 10 times 8 over 2 times 9 and meter per second. So this is about 5 meters per second. <clears throat> now let's take, this is a very interesting one. Problem 3.79 from the book. So it says that there is a particle and its x and y coordinates are given by this equation. And y of t is r So first of all, it asks you to sketch this. 
the motion of this particle, that what's happening over here? What does this describe? You are given what the x and y coordinates are at all times, so you should be able to, in principle, plot it. So let me try to plot it in steps. I see that something is being linearly added over here. So let's freeze this out and see if this term was not there. If instead I had x of t is equal to minus r. So I just drop the first term and y equal to then what the motion will look like. So you can see if I plot it, at t is equal to 0, x is 0 because sin is 0 and at t is equal to uh, 0, cosine is 1. But 1 minus 1 again gives me 0. So the coordinates are 0, 0. So at t is equal to 0, the particle is here at the origin. Now I check it for if you have these sinusoidal functions, it's better to check at some multiples of pi by 2 divided by this omega. So in other words, if I check at omega is equal to, let me just move a little bit down at omega t is equal to pi by 2. So what's going to happen? Sine now gives me a 1. So I come over here and at that time cosine is 0. So uh, the uh, x coordinate is minus r and y coordinate is r. So it's here. We draw it a bit compact. Let's say this is R. This is R. So it's here. This is at pi by 2. Omega t is equal to pi by 2. <clears throat> and what happens at omega t is equal to pi. Now, sine of omega t is again 0, but cosine this time is minus 1. Co co cosine this time is minus 1. So, you have 2r. y is 2r. So, 1r and another r. And x is 0. So, it's here. This is pi. Now at 3 pi by 2, what happens is sine becomes minus 1. So it gives me a positive r and cosine is again 0. So I get r. So I come here. And at 2 pi, you again come back here. So what's happening is you are going in a circle. So if I drop that linear term, this is again a circular motion, just shifted away from the region. The only difference is that its region is over here, somewhere here. And it's moving also, the other difference is the, the equation we considered in class, over there the particle was moving anti-clockwise. This particle is moving clockwise. So you can imagine it is like as if the particle is on the uh, on the rim of a, of a wheel. Wheel is moving clockwise, and it's this is the road surface. So the wheel is moving like that, and it's on 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 top of this. But that's not our actual equations are. Our actual equations have an extra factor of. 2 pi of r omega t. So what does that r omega t does? Whatever the values are of the um, 
of the x component at each t at time t is adding a linear uh, it's adding a number to it so this happens but on top of it we are adding some number in the x direction so what happens is at for example at t omega t is equal to 2 pi you should be here but this term tells you omega t is 2 pi so you end up at 2 pi r so instead of this being here it's at 2 pi r while y does the exactly the same thing which it was doing before so what you have done you have actually mapped the whole diameter because imagine this this like this wheel is if it were rolling on the road then you will by the time this thing comes back you have mapped the whole tire onto the road so that's why you have like if there were paint over here you have painted a 2 pi r piece which is the circumference of the circle onto the road so if the particle was here what it will do it will do like it will do something like this like this so it's describing a particle sitting on at one spot of a wheel and the wheel is rolling onto the road so that's the motion is describing and for example if i look at omega t is equal to pi the particle should have been here but it will be here at pi because omega t because this part is added to it omega t is pi so it will be at pi r this point is pi r so is there a question about it so this motion is called cycloid so these equations are called describing a cycloid and it's just a particle sitting on top of a tire and the tire is rolling onto the road without slipping so now uh, the question is what is the velocity so velocity is a vector its components are x dot which gives me r omega minus r omega cosine omega t and vy is y dot x dot is dx by dt y dot is dy by dt this gives me r omega sine omega t and if i want to find the components of acceleration this is x double dot that means two derivatives of x so this is gives me zero this gives me r omega square sine omega t and a y gives me y double dot and that is r omega square cosine omega t now <coughs> if i find what is the magnitude of acceleration at any time so that's ax square plus ay square so that's a constant just like what happened in the case of motion along the circle and if I find what is the magnitude of the velocity then I have this term square 
So R square omega square plus R square omega square cosine square omega t minus the cos term 2 R square omega square cosine omega t and then I have the square of the Vy which gives me R square omega square sine square omega t so these two combine to give me 1 and I get if I take r square omega r square omega square out of the square root I get r omega and this gives me 2 minus 2 cosine omega t well I can write it as under the 2 r omega 1 minus cosine omega t so I find that velocity is actually not constant in this case mag of velocity which is the speed is not constant and when omega t is equal to uh, 0 or 2 pi or 4 pi to n pi and this integer the magnitude is 0 v mag is 0 you can see it from these equations as well if I look at these equations when cosine omega t is 1 and sine omega t is 0 then x dot the x component of velocity and y, y component of velocity both are 0 so the velocity vanishes at this point so let me write here when cosine omega t is 1 and sine omega t is 0 vx and vy both are 0 and this happens at these points when omega t is 2n pi and this integer So if I look over here, what point is that? So remember, it's this point when it comes back here. So it goes like this when it's over here. It goes like that. And when it comes back here, it's, the velocity is zero. Why is that? So it's actually going like this. So it goes like that. The wheel is moving forward like that, but then it moves over there. So the, because there's an x component added in here, it's trying to come back like that but the wheel is taking it forward so these two things these two effects cancel and if you imagine how would you see this particle moving it will go like that and then it comes back like that and then it comes back so when it comes back at that point it's momentarily zero so you can ask what's the acceleration at that point So, acceleration at that point, x double dot, which is the x component of acceleration, you can see is over here. Sine omega t is 0, so that is 0, while the y component of the acceleration, cos omega t is 1, is r omega square. So, at this instant, 
ax is zero and ay is r omega square. So the acceleration is directed like that. You can ask, like in the circular motion, the acceleration only had a normal component. So in this case, you can ask, is the, is the, is the acceleration always normal to the velocity? Well, to do that, you need to do this. V dot A, let me write here, is acceleration normal to velocity? So remember, we usually talk about normal and tangential components in relation to the direction of velocity because velocity tells me where the particle is going at a particular instant. So is acceleration normal to velocity? Remember, how do we decide this? If two vectors, their dot product is zero, that means they are normal. Because this is cosine of the angle between them. And if I compute this, I have to do V dot A. So V dot A gives me, let me go up. Unfortunately, I have half the screen available today, so I have to go up and down. So you are multiplying this guy with this guy. That's the first thing you have to do in the uh, dot product. And then you have to multiply this guy with this guy. So when I multiply <clears throat> this guy with this guy, I get R square mega square sin omega t minus r square mega square sin omega t cos omega t while i when multiply this with this i get r square omega cube well everything was cubed over there as well <coughs> r square omega cube sin omega t cos omega t so let me write it over here so i get from here r square omega cube sine omega t plus minus r square omega cube sine omega t cosine omega t plus r square omega cube sine omega t cosine omega t and this is equal to magnitude of the velocity which was r omega under root 2 minus 2 cosine omega t times r omega square which was the magnitude of the acceleration times cosine of the angle between acceleration and velocity at any given time now these cancel And I'm left with R square omega cube sine omega t. And over here, R square omega cube under root 2, 1 minus cosine omega t, cosine of alpha of t. So this tells me that the angle between them is sine omega t over under root 2 1 minus cosine omega t so it's not 0 it's not 90 the angle between them is not 90 because the scalar part is not 0 cosine of the angle between them is not 0 always actually it's changing it depends on time so angle depends on time And I can compute it at any given time. For example, if I look at this instant, <coughs> when it's over here, well, let's say over here, going upwards like that, 
when the wheel is going like that it will actually not be here because the actual motion is this red thing so it will be like this the velocity would be like this so at this point omega t remember is pi by 2 so sine of omega t is 1 so at omega t is equal to pi by 2 cosine of alpha between them is 1 over under root 2 sine of omega t is 1 cosine of pi by 2 is 0 so it's 1 over under root 2 that means alpha is 45 degrees And you can see this kind of from here as well that the acceleration, sorry about this, acceleration components, the x component is r omega square, y component is 0. So the x component of acceleration over here, acceleration is pointed this way. This is acceleration and this is velocity. So given what we discussed in class, what does this mean? This means acceleration has a tangential component and a normal component. So tangential component means that it is still speeding up as the particle rides up, it's speeding up at this instant and also it's turning to the right. Let me just do one more problem and then I'll end this. If I can find that page. Okay, let me open the book. Let me see where was my problem. Just give me one second. Didn't find the number for it. Okay, yeah, let's do this one. Uh, this is problem 3.27. Problem 3.27. And I have to go back to the book to read it. So it says that a jet plane comes in for a downward drive in a circle, in a part of a circle. The bottom part of the path is a quarter circle with a radius of curvature of 350 meters. So that means that it is this part is as if it's going to a radius, radial motion of 
radius 350 meter. And it says according to medical tests, pilots lose consciousness at an acceleration of 5.5 g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. So if you encounter an acceleration bigger than that, there are chances that you will black out. So at what speed in meter per second or mile per hour will the pilot black out for this drive? Dive. So let me draw 350 meter, that's all I need, and 5.5 g. So it's going through like this, and I'm, we are only interested in this part where it's a circle, part of a circle. And you should note that if some path is part of a circle, because when we are analyzing the motion, the particle only knows what's happening at that point. The equations we are writing down, they are good at one particular time. In the limit to validity, at each, each point they are valid. So they don't care what what's happening at other parts. If this is part of the circle, that's all what is relevant. They don't know what we, we're going to change our path later on. The equation is written for each point over here. So it only knows that it's going to a circle. And this circle's radius is 350 meters. That's the dive. So what would be the acceleration? Acceleration, we derived the formula if you're going to a circle at constant speed and we are assuming that it's a constant speed. It's very important. Not all circular motions have that equation. It's only circular motion with constant speed. So acceleration was omega square r where omega was how was omega? Omega was related to t is equal to 2 pi over omega where t is the time period time to complete one cycle <coughs> and we had also had v velocity is omega r actually I, then i don't really probably need to include this so omega is can be also written as v over r so i put it here I get A is equal to V square over R square times R. So it's V square over R. So acceleration is V square over R. And the maximum acceleration which we are allowed is 5.5 into 10 meter per second square times the R which is 350 meters and that's v square that's the maximum velocity which he can withstand so you get let me do the math so this probably looks like a interesting number So it's 19,250 meter per second square. That gives me a velocity of 138 meter per second. The circle was very, very small. The smaller the circle you can see, the bigger would be the acceleration. With the same speed, if you go through a bigger circle, you will encounter less, less acceleration. So this gives me 138 meters, kilometers over 1000 and for a second I can write one second so 
one second is I can write 60 into 60 seconds is one hour so a second is one hour over 60 into 60 so this gives me one hour 60 into 60 so that gives me 138 496 kilometers per hour that doesn't look like a very big speed for a plane but since the circle is very small so if you're going to a small circle you will encounter a large acceleration so i'm gonna stop here but i'm gonna upload a homework don't be get scared of the homeworks homeworks is the only way you're gonna learn the subject and if you just keep doing the homeworks if you find harder that's even better that just means that you are doing it properly you are doing the problems which will teach you the subject and once i, I when i write homeworks i think a lot about what i'm doing i don't give you random homeworks so if you just go over the homeworks if you do them on their own on your own you you will find it hard you will be probably spending your weekends on them but you will be fully prepared for your exam and once you are done with the course you will have definitely mastered this subject and you would have also picked up lots of the concepts for your later on courses for linear algebra and for calculus so don't get discouraged by the homeworks i'm going to send you lots of long big hard homeworks but you have all the help needed is available you find it hard talk to the TAs two TAs you still can't get it shoot me an email I'll definitely reply you whenever you email me so and a, a new homework is coming which will be due I'll make it due let's say in a week's time so that you have some time but I'm gonna also send a homework for the next week's work as well so if you have any question now is the time and then I'll stop it. Any question? Any question? Okay, so there's no question, I'm going to stop here. There is something in the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna, I hope this is recorded. I'm gonna upload it. So those who haven't, who weren't part today, tell them if you're friends with them to definitely watch it. Okay, bye.